Hey guys, I'm going to talk to you about async and await today in .NET and .NET Core. Um, please bear with me and watch the whole video. I promise you it'll be worth your while. It just keeps getting better as we go. I want to talk to you about specifically the things that I wish someone had told me when I was getting started with development in .NET. And, well, let's get started. Just because you see everybody's code that says await and then a method name and you know and then you just keep writing code, what that really means is you're going to wait for that method to finish and come back and then continue. You don't have to write your code that way. You can write a task, have it go do it, and then write some other code and then wait for it at the bottom. So in other words, you do all these tasks while this parallel code is running and then you can wait on that task if it's not yet finished. That's kind of like the way we used to do parallel programming before we learned about async a wait, right? So we just kind of like lost track, I think, or at least I did when I was learning it. I'll show you what I'm talking about in code right now. All right, rather than making you guys watch me type, I've thrown up a real simple program here. So check this out. If I run it, it's going to do hello world, and then it's going to call this task. You'll notice I do not have an a wait in front of this task. It's going to go ahead and perform this task right away, but because I don't have an a wait, it's going to continue on to the next line. It says, I won't wait. I will run while that's running. And then it will wait on the task, but that task is already running. So if I hit F5, you'll see, hello world, running. I won't wait. I will run while that's running. And boom, just now done showed up. So uh, that done was over here um, because it, it showed running right as it began. Then it showed this message. And then I'll do it one more time for you. Hello world, running. So right away it hit that running, but done didn't show up till later. Running, done, and right in the middle, I won't wait, right? So what you're seeing here is another way of doing things that could make sense in your programs, and no one showed me this, so that's why I'm showing it to you. What you've probably seen a hundred times is more along the lines of instead of static string task over here and you know returning something and saying it's finished, you've probably seen something more along the lines of string my string equals a wait and then the method name my method right Oops, my method is probably why you guys don't like to watch me type all right <laughs> uh, and and so it's it's waiting right away so now you can say I will wait I'm a waiter right <laughs> uh, and um, you won't need that a little bit less code, but it obviously does something completely different. So I'm going to hit F5. Hello world, running, done. And I will wait, because it waited, right? Another big one that people often um, hear about is, especially in kind of applications where you got a lot of requests coming in, you got to put them in a queue, process them, and do certain tasks where some things rely on other tasks and some things don't rely on other tasks. Um, you want to put those tasks into a list and wait on all the tasks that depend on a particular resource or, or they all have to be completed before the next step happens. Um, it's super easy, so this one won't take long at all. Bear with me, okay? So I'm going to copy this method and do it a couple times. We'll just call it uh, running A and um, just like that. Call it my method 2 and my method 3. And we're going to put all the tasks in a list. So uh, we got string, uh, we'll copy this one. My task two, my task three, my method two, my method three. And I know I promised I wasn't going to type. Here I am typing. Not so bad though, right? We'll create a generic list, but we'll give it a type of task string. Uh, control dot on that using generic collections uh, my list equal to new list and now we're going to stuff that list stuff it good so my list um, dot add my task and we'll just repeat that remember code reuse we're not doing that here but that is a good principle all right so we've added your uh, tasks to your list, and now we're going to wait on all of them to perform. Because as you can see just up here, they've already started running, um, but we haven't awaited anything. So you could do task 
got when all, and we're gonna await that. We're waiting for when we're waiting for them all to finish. It's like very grammatically correct, right? When all tasks are finished, we're waiting for all tasks to finish. And then you could say, um, okay, next item is ready to process. And just so we can have a little bit of clarity here, A, B, and C. We're not really using those returns, but that's okay. I'm gonna hit F5. A, B, and C. And now we're ready to process. Okay. Just for a com kind of completion sake on this one example, if you wanted to see those results from these methods, actually in this case, kind of putting them into an array, so you could just do like string results are in this. Uh, if I put a breakpoint here and I, you know, change it to be Z, uh, Y, and X, I'll hit my breakpoint here and I can hover over results. You can see Z, Y, and X. So that does work like that. Um, now, uh, one last thing I do want to show you on async A wait, since I'm talking about things I wish people showed me is um, how to call uh, a asynchronous method from a synchronous method. Because sometimes you're working on a big project that somebody else wrote and they didn't put async task main at the start or it's not an asynchronous controller and it's, it's too much work to change it. You just want to call this method or you just want to call this API. I'll show you how to do that. I went ahead and got rid of um, the most of what we were looking at. I just kept the one async method. And over here we've got um, a static void main, not an async main. And this is not the way to do it. I just put it here so you can see the concept of running an asynchronous method from a synchronous method. As you can see, I'm just, I said, go ahead and run this task. And then inside there, I put an asynchronous um, method call. And if you look at the result, it's gonna tell you uh, waiting for activation, not yet computed. Uh, and then, you know, it's kind of like after you read line, it's gonna run. It, it just doesn't know what to do. So the age old approach that I always take is that get a waiter dot get result um, so if I just do um, um, the method name here which was I think it was my method I could do dot get waiter dot get result I'm gonna hit a five look at the result there you are now I do believe that there is probably a better way of doing this and I'm going to conclude this video with please just asking you to fill me in if you know of a better way of calling an asynchronous method from a synchronous method that may be more reliable. This seems to have worked for me in the past but and I know you know guys don't design it intentionally this way if you can make the whole thing async and then just await things that need to be uh, that you need to wait on. Um, well, anyways, I hope this video helped you. I was uh, kind of shortened to the point and I solved the problems that I wish someone had shown me.